All right, let's talk about Kramer's Rule. Kramer's Rule is actually uh, one of uh, the beautiful things in mathematics, I believe. It's, uh, it's just a neat little idea. Um, and it's a way to solve a system of equations using only determinants. So it's, uh, it's just very interesting. So here's uh, the way it works. Uh, Kramer's Rule. We have uh, A is an n by n matrix. Then for any B in Rn, the unique solution x of Ax equals B um, is given by this uh, formula here, which looks rather odd. Um, notice that we've got uh, a way to compute x of i for each i, and it's just a, uh, a ratio of determinants. In the denominator, we've got just the determinant of a. In the numerator, it's the determinant of a sub i of b. So a sub i of b refers to the matrix formed by replacing the ith column of A with B. Okay, so we replace the ith column of A with B. So to get x1, um, we replace the first column of A with B and compute that determinant, divide by the determinant of A, that's the value for x1, and so forth. So neat idea. So let's just uh, use it to solve this system. All right, so we need the determinant of A. So that's just uh, 8 minus 5, which is 3. The determinant of A sub 1 of B, so notice that I've just taken B, 6, 7, plopped it into the first column of A. Take the determinant, get 5. Same thing, uh, A sub 2 of B, we take B and plop it in the second column of A. And take that determinant, we get negative 2. And so x1 is just the 5 divided by 3, and x2 is the negative 2 divided by 3, and those are the values of x1 and x2. Um, just to check, uh, we take 5 thirds times the first column of A, minus 2 thirds times the second column of A, and we indeed get 6, 7. Yippee! nice when things work like they're supposed to. I use the same method for 3 by 3 system. Although this time you got to compute uh, you know, a determinant for each of three variables plus the determinant of A. So here's a, a matrix A in the right hand side, B. Compute the determinant of A first and then we compute the determinant of a sub 1 of b. So again, take b, take the vector b, stick it in the first column of a, leave the rest of a alone, and compute that determinant. Same thing, a sub 2 of b, we take b, stick it in the second column of a, and leave the rest of a alone, compute that determinant. a sub 3 of b, we take the uh, b, replace the third column of a, compute that determinant, and then put it all together. Um, x1 is going to be negative 16 over 4, x2 is going to be 52 over 4, and x3 is going to be negative 4 over 4. And so there's your solution to this system. So just a really neat uh, idea and a neat way to solve systems of equations. You know, but clearly we run into the same problem for this 3 by 3 it really wasn't that bad, but if it was a 4 by 4 system, then you're computing um, 5 4 by 4 determinants, right? Because you have to compute one for each variable, one for each column. So you'd be have a1, a2, a3, and a4 of b, plus you need to compute the original uh, determinant. So you have five four by four determinants, and that would be a lot of work. So this is not practical in a general sense, but um, for for theoretical and for um, uh, small matrices like this, it's kind of a neat idea. We can also apply it to a question like this: um, determine the values of the parameter s for which the system given by this augmented matrix has a unique solution and then describe the solution. Okay, so it, we know it has a unique solution when the determinant is not zero. 
okay, because the determinant's not zero, A is invertible, and um, there's a unique solution. So if we take the determinant of uh, the coefficient part of that matrix, uh, we end up with 15 times S squared plus 3. And note that um, 15 times S squared plus 3 is is not equal to zero for all values of s, and you can never uh, end up with um, with that equal to zero as long as s is a real number, because s squared plus three is always going to be positive. Um, and so um, this system is going to have a unique solution no matter what the value of s is. So we compute um, to get the uh, to, to be able to describe the solution, um, we can use Kramer's rule. Um, and uh, so I've just uh, computed A1 of B. That takes B, the 3, 2, sticks it in the first column of A. And we compute that determinant. Then same thing, A sub 2 of B. We stick right-hand side on the second column, compute that determinant. And then... Um, uh, kind of massage things a little bit, and uh, we have expressions for the value of x1 and x2 um, for any uh, value of s. Okay, so it's uh, just the 5 times 3s plus 2 divided by the determinant of a here, and the 3 times 2s minus 9 divided by the determinant of a for x2. Uh, we can also use Kramer's rule to compute A inverse because as we saw in chapter 2, to compute A inverse, we simply need to solve um, some systems of equations. So if we consider this matrix A, um, we want to find B such that A times B equals the identity matrix. Right? So B here would be the inverse of A. So let's let uh, B1 and B2 uh, denote the columns of B and let E1 and E2 denote the columns of the identity matrix and we've used that notation before. So we need to solve A times B1 equals uh, E1 and A times B2 equals E2 here in this 2 by 2 case. Alright, so if we take the determinant of A, go back up and look at A here, 2 times 8 is 16, minus 3 times 5, so 16 minus 15. Determinant of A is just 1. Okay, now to get B1, we're solving this system here, A times B1 equals E1. So, um, to get the first entry in B1, that's the determinant of A1 of E1, right? We're solving, look at this augmented matrix. So to get the first entry in the solution, um, we replace the first column of A by the right-hand side, which is E1. Compute that determinant, get 8. 8 over 1 is just 8. So um, the 1-1 one, one entry in the inverse is 8. All right, now to get the the second entry in the solution to this uh, system here, um, we um, substitute E1 into the second column of A. All right, so here we go with that. And uh, compute that determinant, negative 5 divided by 1, we get negative 5. So um, we've got the first column of the inverse, right, because we were solving this system, A times B1 equals E1, and so that's the first column. So we get the first column of the inverse, B1, would be 8, negative 5. To get B2, we solve uh, a similar system. Just now the right-hand side is 0, 1 instead of 1, 0. And so to get the first entry in the solution to this system, we substitute 0, 1 in the first column of A. All right, so we see that here. Compute the determinant, get negative 3, divided by 1, negative 3. And then the second entry means substitute the right-hand side in the second column of A. Compute that determinant, you get 2, divided by the determinant of A, and we have 2. So we have A inverse, which is B, given by this matrix that we just computed. So in general, 
the ijth entry in the inverse is given by the determinant of a sub i of ej divided by the determinant of a. So if you go back, for instance here, to get the 1, 2 entry in the inverse, we computed the determinant of a sub 1 of e2 divided by the determinant of a. To get the 2, 2 entry, it was a 2 of e2 divided by the determinant of a. So in general, the ijth entry in the inverse is a, the determinant of a sub i of ej divided by the determinant of a. Um, we actually give, uh, we actually have create a, a matrix, which we call the adjugate or the adjoint um, of a matrix, and stick in these values, these uh, determinants of a sub i, e sub j. Okay, we call that the the book uses the term adjugate primarily. Um, I typically use adjoint, so those are um, synonymous terms. Okay, but it's composed of all these determinants, and so basically it's just these things, but with the determinant of a uh, term factored out. So in general, a inverse is equal to one over the determinant of a times the adjoint of a. All right. So let's use that to find the inverse of this matrix here. Okay, so first uh, we'll find the adjoint or the adjugate of A. And um, remember to get the, uh, to get the ijth entry in the adjoint, it's the determinant of A sub I, E sub J. So for the 1, 1 entry, it's the determinant of A1, E1. For the 2, 1 entry, determinant of A2, E1. 3, 1 entry, determinant of A3, E1. All right, so I've computed all those. A sub 1 of E1, remember E1 is the first column of the identity matrix. The A1 says substitute that into the first column of A. So there you have E1, 1, 0, 0, substitute in the first column of A, and I take that determinant. A sub 2 of E1 says put E1 into the second column of A. So there we have it, determinant there is 0. A sub 3 of E1 says put E1 in the third column of A. So there we go. Take that determinant. And do the same thing uh, for the other six entries in the adjoint. 1, 2 position, determinant of A1 of E2. So take E2, which is 0, 1, 0, and substitute that in the first column of A. So there. So you can see here we have 0, 1, 0 in the first column, here it's in the second column, here it's in the third column. And we compute each one of those determinants. Then do it one more time for the third column. Let's get the 1, 3, 2, 3, and 3, 3 elements. Um, so E3 is 0, 0, 1. So we stick it in the first column of A, then the second column of A, third column of A, and compute all those determinants. Then we put it all together. Um, this is what we get. And we need the determinant of A, which we can compute. That's 5. So uh, the inverse of A is just 1 over the determinant of A, so 1 fifth times the adjoint of A, which is this matrix. And there's your inverse, computed totally by doing elementary, uh, not elementary row operations, totally using determinants.